Welcome to another episode of our SaaS Stories podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and this is a show where I interview proven founders and industry experts who share their story strategies and insights to help you build, launch, and grow your business. In this episode, I talk to Rajan, the founder of FitMe, a groundbreaking platform poised to revolutionize how women experience the bra fittings. With an unwavering commitment to addressing the global issue of ill-fitting bras, Rajan's brainchild, FitMe, seamlessly merged cutting-edge technology, personalized algorithms, and sustainability. The staggering statistic of around 80 to 90% of women wearing incorrectly sliced bras fuels Rajan's mission to empower the women worldwide. Through the -the state-of-the-art smartphone scanning and 3D modeling, FitMe harnesses data to create personalized solutions that not only guarantees a perfect fit, but also aligns with the eco-conscious values. Rajan's dedication to full fit and sustainability proves the way for a confident and planet-friendly future for women everywhere. So I hope you enjoy the show. Rajan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ash. Really appreciate this opportunity. Do you have a favorite quote, something that inspires or motivates you that you can share? Uh, A quote? Oh, good Lord. Um... No, not at, not that I can think of straight away. <laughs> okay, it's fine. You can take your time. It's I'm, not I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of of Steve Jobs uh, in uh-huh. the background. So he has he has plenty of quotes. Um, I love, uh, but I can't straight away uh, recall any any uh, at the top of my head. Sorry. That's all right. That's all right. One of the one of the previous. Um, um, guest on my show, they quoted one of one um, quote from Steve Jobs' uh, diary. I guess that hire smart people and let them do their jobs. Yeah. So I really love it. So I thought I'll just share it with you. Great stuff. So tell us about FitMe. What does the product do? Who is it for? And what's the main problem you're helping to solve? Sure. Um, our uh, solution is twofold. One is to help women and. Mm-hmm is to help the environment. Um, first, let me talk about uh, helping women. Um, mm-hmm. As you very rightly said, more than 80% of the women wear wrong size bra, which mm-hmm. is uh, a significant problem for women. Most of the women complain that they are not able to find correctly fitting bras and they want to get rid of it. As soon as they reach home, uh, they do not want to wear bras. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the reasons uh, and the primary reason for uh, that is that un, uh, discomfort is because they are not wearing correctly fitting bras. Now, uh, not wearing a correctly fitting bras affects their health, including uh, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain. Uh, most women that we have spoken to, uh, they can correlate, they can relate to their own personal stories to uh, what we talk about. Um, on top of that, uh, with fast fashion and uh, online uh, retail space, uh, going um, from step to step up and um, with its size increasing. Um, people are struggling to find uh, correctly fitting garments, including bras. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, what happens that when people uh, buy clothes, they rather than buying one size, they end up buying two, three different sizes mm-hmm. and uh, return majority of the garments that they have purchased. Um, and sometimes they end up returning all the garments that they have uh, purchased. This creates a major problem for the retail industry uh, that um, when the garments are returned to them, uh, more than 50% of the garments which are returned, they are either sent to landfill or they are sent for incineration. This Mm -hmm. is um, a major environmental problem. So what we are trying to do here is to solve uh, the problem which is there uh, on, on two folds. One is helping women and the other is helping retailers and solving this environmental problem that fashion industry is uh, facing. That's really good. That's really good. I didn't knew that you can actually return uh, your undergarments if you buy it from online stores because I thought that this is something which uh, comes under non-returnable policies from for this e-commerce store. Well, um, as far as bras are concerned, majority of the bras, majority of the retailers uh, allow mm-hmm. uh, the return of bras, but they do not allow the return of the bottoms. So uh, mm-hmm. 
primarily for the hygiene reasons. Uh, yeah. So bras are still returnable. That for majority of the retailers, um, but the bottoms are not the way you very rightly point out. Sure, sure. So let's talk about where the story begins. Where did the idea of Fit Me came from? What was the epiphany? Well, uh, the idea for Fit Me came from uh, my and my wife's personal stories. Uh, I used to travel to the US uh, on, um, um, on, on an assignment uh, when I used to work for a company. And I used to travel every month. So I would spend two weeks in the US and two weeks in the UK. Mm -hmm. And during one of those trips, I decided to buy clothes for my wife. When I came back to the UK, uh, they did not fit her. And mm -hmm. so on my next trip, I returned those clothes and bought a new set of clothes, but from a different company. Mm -hmm. Came back and uh, they again did not fit her. So I felt that... Uh, I felt very em embarrassed, actually, that I could not find correctly fitting garments for my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started researching along along with my wife, and we found that there is a major problem in the fa fashion industry. Uh, there is no standardization uh, in terms of, uh, for example, if you want to buy a size 8 dress, <clears throat> then in uh, M&S uh, or in Zara, you could be different sizes, and still you could be size 8. So... Mm -hmm. Um, uh, due to lack of standardization across industry, uh, we were, uh, people are confused. Uh, when I talk about bras, uh, specifically bras, um, uh, Sun newspaper sent out one of their models to uh, about seven different uh, stores to get herself fitted for the mm -hmm. bra. And uh, it's, it's a video available online to, for everyone to see. And mm -hmm. uh, every single store gave her a different size bra. So mm -hmm. women get really confused you know, when they have to shop online that which size will fit them. So um, uh, th this is where our journey has started. And uh, we are trying to solve the problem that everyone is facing. Indeed, indeed. And this is very um, unknown, I think, in the, uh, in the consumer's world where they the uh, your your primary ideal uh, customer profiles they're they're trying to purchase uh, uh, you know bras to to fit fit their body but even the companies who are selling them with the standard size they don't know what is the standard across the consumers right is that there is, that is correct yeah. the fashion industry suffers from the lack of standardization and as a result of that as i say um both the consumer as well as the retailers, they uh, they are suffering. So we are uh, uh, going into the space of providing perfectly accurate, very accurate measurements for mm. the, the consumers and the retailers. Um, so we can scan the person using their own smartphone and get accurate body measurements. And then for those body measurements, we would like to suggest correctly fitting garments for the, uh, for the consumer. Indeed, indeed. And I want to go into the tech tech uh, you're using and how it works all. But before that, would you be able to uh, tell us more about like when you had the epiphany, did you look into the market, were there other products, what was going on at that time? And what did you see from your research that encouraged you to move ahead with this idea? Sure. Um, well, we started this entire idea during uh, the COVID lockdowns um, in, I would say, around September time, um, uh, August, September 2020, that we started looking into this uh, this idea and mm -hmm. we started uh, the business. Uh, in terms of uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the competition, at that time, when we started uh, this, uh, uh, this work, we did not have any specific competition at that time. But ever since we started working on this, and we are a very small team, we do not have a um, uh, lot of money like major companies have. Uh, so we are a little slow in progressing our uh, our uh, significant work compared to our competitors. So since we started our work, uh, a couple of competitors have come to the space and uh, they have collaborated with uh, a couple of retailers uh, mm -hmm. who are trying to provide uh, we're using very similar technology as, as us, but where we are different is our 
measurements are far more accurate compared to our competitors. We have tried to use their own technology to understand what they are doing and how we can provide much better experience for our users. So uh, yes, there, there, is, uh, there is a competition now, but when we started, there was no competition in the, in the market. Indeed, indeed. And, and as you mentioned about you, you're a small team, are you completely bootstrapped? Have you, uh, re, you know, got any seed funding or give us, give us the sense of the size of the business? Where are you in terms of, you know, number of customers or size of team? Sure. I mean, we are, we are at the moment pre-revenue. Uh, we have raised a small amount of funding. Uh, fortunately, the UK government is uh, helping business owners like me who are trying to innovate um, and help uh, people. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, they have launched a, a scheme called Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme. And we have received an advance assurance uh, from HMRC so that uh, we can raise funds from the investors and uh, the investors can take uh, ben- uh, take the benefit of uh, seed enterprise investment scheme in short it's called SEIS wherein uh, the investor can get about 50% of the money that they invest in my company back in terms of uh, tax breaks so that uh, whatever the tax they have paid either they can claim it back or they can offset it against the tax that they would need to pay indeed indeed so, 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 Rajan, before we move towards the technology part, um, what I have found that our listeners are very keen to learn about the guest, their personal life. So I, I'm eager to learn more about the person behind this innovative venture. You know, can you can you take us back to your roots, share with our listeners about your upbringing, your childhood? How did your early experiences shape your journey and eventually led you to become the visionary entrepreneur you are and were there any key influences in your family or friends surrounding that played a significant role shaping your entrepreneurial spirit you know we'd we'd love to hear more about the foundation that set you to the incredible path sure um i'll share a little bit of my background so i come i was born and raised in in india i come from uh, a family um where uh, being in business is in our blood. Um, and uh, so I was, I always wanted to get into uh, my own business. And um, my journey in, in, in the technology started when my dad bought me a first PC back in 1991, which wow. had, which had uh, 20 megabyte of uh, hard drive. And uh, two floppy drives, <laughs> and uh, I started uh, programming in um, basic language. And mm-hmm. since then, I have uh, uh, I have had a diploma in software engineering uh, back in 1995 that I received it. And um, uh, however, I am uh, I have received a PhD in civil engineering uh, mm-hmm. from University of Dundee in in Scotland. Uh, I was awarded Dorothy Hodgkin Postgraduate Award, which was launched by Tony Blair uh, to attract best of the best from the developing world to the UK uh, to pursue research. And um, ever since I started working, I have developed uh, some sort of software for uh, practically all of my employers to automate their uh, one or the other type of processes. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, programming has been my passion, and I say this is now a time to convert that passion into uh, uh, into possibly a living, and that's how I started my journey of uh, creating this uh, this app that would help uh, the retailers and women uh, solve their problems. Sure, sure. So let's let's move towards the understanding of how you're helping to solve this problem in practical senses for example um i want to order a bra and um maybe i'm a plus size person or i'm a a petite woman depending upon my requirements how do i use your technology and i would also like to uncover what sort of uh, tech stacks or tech uh, technology you're using in the back end to provide this insights to the users Sure. Um, so uh, what we are trying to create 
is a very simple uh, but very secure um, uh, app that focuses on your privacy. So privacy is at our uh, core. Uh, we uh, we are, I believe, we, we, we would be the leader in uh, ensuring the privacy of the user uh, who is using our technology. Now, uh, our competitors, uh, they use very similar technology, but you have no option but to provide your photographs, including your face. However, mm -hmm. when we scan you, we take photographs just like our competitors, but we blur your face. So when you, and then we provide all the photos, we show you all the photos um, and, uh, so that you can ensure that uh, your face is not visible in any of those photos. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you are satisfied that all the photos which are taken during the scanning process are um, are okay for you to upload, you are comfortable with it, then you approve uh, for uh, uploading those photos to our servers. We process those photos uh, and uh, based on the photos that we have collected, we stitch them together to create a 3D point cloud. We collect about, in total, about 1 million data points for your body. And uh, based on that, we create a three-dimensional three model. That three-dimensional model then provides your body measurements. And those body measurements would then allow you to, uh, 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 to select what your band size is, what your burst size is. And based on the band size and burst size, we have created a machine learning algorithm wherein we would use your body measurements to then uh, uh, match your body size and body measurements to correctly fitting garment. So we use uh, computer vision algorithms to create that 3D model and then use machine learning algorithms to uh, provide you the correctly fitting garments. So it's a, it's a very deep um, artificial intelligence technology that we are developing. Mm -hmm. Majority of the retailers uh, use different types of uh, uh, materials. Uh, no two retailers use same type of material. And so what we use is the type of material that is used in the construction of a, a specific garment uh, as one of the parameters alongside your body measurement. So it's a highly complex uh, algorithm that we are, we are developing here. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you're not just a technology company, you're also a garment company? No, we are not garment company. We are just technology company. We would provide you the garments from the existing retailers. Uh, so if you, um, uh, let's say, like to shop at a specific retailer, then uh, you would have the option of selecting the garment from that specific retailer. So what we would do is for your body measurement, let us say that um, uh, from different retailers, uh, different sizes will fit you. So for example, in next, you could be 32C uh, bra size. In MNS, you could be 32D. And in uh, Victoria's Secret, you could be, let's say, 30D. So there are, uh, so we would give you these options wherein you can select from which retailer you want to buy your garment. And for that retailer, which size you should buy. So mm. uh, we are completely independent. We are neutral. We do not take any side for any specific uh, retailer we are trying to give you the best possible garment fitting across the market right so basically you analyze the data and let the user know that uh, because of your size and, and analysis we have done these were the retailers who are providing these are the products which will fit you the best you choose which one you want to buy Absolutely, that is our end goal. However, we are open to work with the retailers uh, to create uh, a white label product for them so that they can use our product specifically for their own app so that we can integrate our technology in their own app. That way, uh, um, uh, in their app, when a user is using, uh, let us say, for example, uh, an app created by Next, then they can use uh, uh, we, we can integrate our app in next app and then uh, the, the consumer can use next app to scan um, their body 
and use Next app to purchase garments which are available in Next. Hmm. Okay, and and tell me, tell us more about your research. Which retailers, um, or, or or sorry, I will rephrase the question. What are the percentage of um, users buying these products online, which is you know the undergarments? Um, and and how, which retailers are, are top sellers, which are medium, which are less, what category sells more, and how does that help the business? Because this is really interesting when you mention that you're open to collaborate with businesses and we do a lot of B2B interviews on the show. Uh, one of our uh, previous guests, they're doing something similar. What they do is they analyze your body when, while you're doing the exercises. So how you move, how your body, uh, you know, react with different kind of exercises. And then based on that, they provide you a um, recommendation on which exercises you can do, what, uh, you know, gym clothings you could be better for you, things like that. But I think they're, 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 they're doing it for the whole body, whereas you're focusing more on the, on the uh, bra sizes and uh, upper body for the women's. So tell us more about the research, which gives you this idea that it would be perfect fit. And then my second part of the question is, um, have you reached out to these retailers and do you have any deals? Okay, uh, let me uh, address one point here that you mentioned about, uh, you mentioned the fitness industry. Now, uh, our technology uh, is uh, open to fitness industry as well. Because what we do is we scan your body and provide you your body measurements. So uh, what you can do is you can scan yourself across different weeks to see how your body is progressing if you are on a fitness plan or if you are on a diet plan. So our uh, app can be used in garment industry and it can be used in the fitness industry as well. So um, it is not only for the bras. Uh, we uh, we have started to um, uh, with one garment, but our goal is to uh, then uh, change. Uh, I mean, improvise our technology to uh, apply it to other garments as well, as well as uh, apply our technology in the in the fitness industry as well. So um, at uh, we are at the moment pre revenue. We do not have any specific customers at the moment. We are looking to collaborate with brands and uh, retailers and uh, gyms, uh, fitness in instructors. Uh, so uh, at this stage, yes, uh, your, to answer your question, we do not have any specific uh, business customers. Uh, we have verified our app with very, very small uh, user base of just about 10. And uh, we have seen that it can be successfully applied. Uh, so the technology is working. We need to now expand to go uh, and probably try to find these connections wherein we can then uh, collaborate with these retailers, fitness instructors, gyms. Um, the, the, the same technology can be used for uh, shoes as well as hair wigs. You and I both are losing hair and we might need to wear a wig at some point in time, possibly. <laughs> So um, you know, the wig industry uh, can use our technology to scan the person's head and uh, provide correctly fitting wigs to, uh, to their users. Uh, we are in uh, discussions at the moment with a hair wig company in London, although we do not have any specific collaborations finalized, but mm -hmm. um, you know, we are very hopeful that we would be able to help uh, that specific wig company to uh, take their, their journey forward alongside our own journey as well. Indeed, indeed. So, so, so going back to my question, then, uh, could you tell us how big the market is and um, what percentage of your, um, you know, like Tam Sam and so on, like what percentage of market you can obtain basically out of that full 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 market. Yeah. So as far as bra market is concerned, that is about uh, uh, 13 uh, billion is is about uh, in terms of the TAM, it is it is about 13 billion. Uh, 
इन टर्म्स ऑफ सैम एंड सोम आर कंसर्न वी आर होपिंग टू हैव सैम ऑफ अबाउट टू बिलियन एंड सोम about 200 million uh, that that's that's our target at the moment for the bra industry as far mm-hmm. as the shoe industry is concerned that's about 300 billion pound industry and overall garment industry is close to about trillion pounds uh, mm-hmm. so and this and this there, time you may like sorry go so there, there there is a huge market out there that we can tap into uh, in excess of a trillion in in, in total yeah yeah and this this market you mentioned is is worldwide not uk right yes yes that is worldwide yes and so when i go to som uh, that would be primarily uh, uk and us indeed indeed okay so tell us more about your icp who is your ideal customer uh, personas profile whichever uh, you know word you want to use um and how are you approaching to your uh, potential customers at this point of time what are the tactics or what are the strategies you're using yeah at the moment um, my ideal customer would be a big uh, online retailer who is in the space of lingerie market uh, so for example um, uh, i would suggest possibly boohoo asos uh, they are bleeding money at the moment uh, between the two companies they have they are bleeding more than 100 million pound uh, just to handle returns so uh, if we are able to and i'm pretty confident that we would be able to save at least 15 to 20% um, in their these returns costs which would be anywhere between 15 and 20 million pounds of savings for those two companies so um, companies like boohoo asos uh, they would be our uh, ideal um, the customers but we are open for collaboration with uh, practically any um, any retailer or brand who have an online presence um, and that is worldwide we can we can provide our technology to um, uh, any of those uh, those retailers indeed indeed and and i must say that that your the more uh, the innovation and and the benefit your app delivers is uh, it's, it's amazing but also there is a big big part of privacy control and uh, you know just confidence of the user to use your app and i i must say that you you understand that as a founder Absolutely. right so 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 what i would like to know like is um what's what kind of use cases you had to go through in order to make sure that your app is so secure and it expresses that security that privacy to the end users so that they become more confident to use your app how how yeah. did you do that i am really glad that you asked this question ash really appreciate this because this is a major concern for our users we have done our market research with the end consumer and we have we have been told that they would not like their photos to be taken in their undergarments uh, which is absolutely understandable because you do not know when those photos can be leaked they can be hacked uh, from anywhere and they can be posted online anywhere and uh, you have no control then so yeah. uh, uh, i i mentioned this earlier that what we do is when we scan we take number of photos when we scan you uh, all those photos are then shown to you they uh, you have to scroll through all those photos and make sure that your face is blurred uh, we do blur all the faces so that they become unrecognizable um, and uh, once you have seen you are satisfied that these photos do not show your face in any of these photos then you approve those photos to be uploaded on our server which is a secure server uh, and they stay on our server for less than 5 minutes we process mm-hmm. all those photos uh, in the in the in, in the background we use python uh, for machine learning uh, and computer vision technology uh, we uh, 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 we stitch all those photos together 
and uh, uh, return a, th a three dimensional model back to you now when we return that three dimensional model back to you your head is chopped off so all you see is below the neckline that mm -hmm. way even let's say the 3d model is hacked leaked or anything like that which remains by the way only on your phone it does not remain on our uh, on our server so even if it gets hacked there is no face attached to it and therefore it cannot be traced back to you you might say how about some prominent tattoos if there are some prominent tattoos on my body can people recognize me well when we collect uh, we create this 3d model uh, majority of the tattoos that we have seen uh, are um, blurred out when we create this 3D model and therefore they become also unrecognizable. So uh, unless and otherwise it is, uh, it covers the entire body, uh, it is, it becomes very, uh, uh, very difficult for someone to tie it back to you. So uh, uh, we have looked at privacy as our uh, biggest uh, part of our technology. We do not want you to be exposed to the world. Indeed, indeed. Every, so, everything that you provide us stays on our server for less than five minutes. And as soon as you have downloaded your 3D model on your phone, everything from our server is deleted. The only thing that will remain after that is your username, your, your user profile. That's it. None of your body related measurements are stored on our server. They remain on your phone. No one can actually see if, uh, if they go through your photo albums or any of those albums, you would not see the 3D model. You would not see your, uh, any of the photos which are taken unless of course you take your own screenshot of your 3D model, then it's, it is stored in your photo album. Otherwise that 3D model is not available for anyone to see. So it is, it is very secure. Uh, apart from that, our app is secured by the face ID or your phone's passport. Therefore, you, uh, anyone uh, who has access to your passport can access the app. Otherwise, no one can uh, access um, our app. So you either need to have your own face ID or your phone's passport to log into uh, our app. So it's, it's a very secure app. And it's a uh, very privacy oriented app. Thank you. And that, that's really descriptive, uh, Rajan. And I really appreciate the way you explained it because that's what um, not just the end consumer, but the investors uh, are looking to understand when they are looking for an edge. So we have lots of investors who listen to our podcast on several different platforms. So before, you know, we are heading towards the end of the interview, before going into the lightning round, I would like to ask you two questions. The first one is, what is your vision? And if you are looking for invest, are you looking for investment? And if you are, then what kind of investment you're looking for? That's my first question. Absolutely. Look, uh, when when we started to, to solve the problem, we have set our first goal is to solve a problem for women. Now, you might want to think that we as men or even women, they might want to think that bra is a simple garment. No. Bra is one of the most complex garment that one can think of. And we have set ourselves on a journey to solve the most difficult problem in the fashion industry to find women correctly fitting bras. So we have not set ourselves any uh, simple goal. We have started with a very, very difficult challenge. So that, that's point number one. I wanted to highlight that. Uh, in terms of investment, yes, we are at this moment, we are raising funds. We are looking for investors. Um, uh, our ideal investor would be would come with some sort of connection within the retail industry so that uh, we can use those connections to get to our customer. Uh, so yes, we are looking to raise uh, investment at the moment. Okay, great stuff. So 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 before heading towards our uh, lighting round, what I would like is you know like throughout your journey and experience, there must have been some valuable lessons learned. If you don't mind sharing, uh, could you reflect on your experiences and tell us about one mistake or a setback that you have encountered along the way and that you now consider not really a regret, but a lessons learned? And then what advice would you give us, our listeners, based on that experience? Um, well, um, 
uh, one of the most important lesson that i have learned is that when you start out the business you think that the road is very smooth simple that is not the case when you start a business the road is always bumpy mm-hmm. you need to be ready to face those bumps uh, and uh, you need to be ready to face the challenges that you have not even uh, considered them to be challenge and uh, 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 you know, life in business is not easy it's 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 very difficult you need support from friends and family especially family uh, your near and dear ones uh, you cannot start a business without the support from your your near and dear ones especially your your immediate family you need thorough support from your family indeed and i i i a second to that you know i understand it um so we should wrap up now uh we we're going to go into the lightning round i've got six quick fire questions for you so just answer them as quickly as you can you ready okay let's see <laughs> all right what book would you recommend to our audience and why what sorry what book would you recommend to our audience and why oh boy oh boy um i have not had uh read a book in a long time but the book that i would like to um uh, suggest to people is a book by del carnegie called um uh, how to win friends and influence people so yes that's that's my favorite one did what one attribute or characteristics in your mind of a successful founder what sorry what what, what attribute? attribute or characteristic in your mind of a successful founder um you need to be dedicated you know, dedication is 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 the first thing that that comes to to my mind uh and persistence so that uh, failures will come uh setbacks will come challenges will come but be persistent and uh, be dedicated to what you are trying to solve okay what what's your favorite personal productivity tool or habit uh my personal favorite productivity tool um uh well personal productivity tool i just i just do the coding using normal um uh, n- normal editor um uh, i do not have any favorite uh, productivity tool to be very honest with you that's all right yeah what's a new crazy business idea you would love to pursue if you had time and money crazy business idea right um i uh, already have one idea which i have already started working towards uh, a little bit on the side uh, is uh, to solve uh, a problem for the automobile industry uh, wherein they have uh, to uh, especially for the uh, for the uh, uh, used car business when they have to uh, take photographs of those cars and upload those on their uh, on their websites so we would like to automate that uh, procedure for the automobile industry okay that that sounds good what's an interesting or fun fact about you that most people don't know no um i'm a very easy going person to be very honest with you and people who come close to me they know me like as, as an open book so i won't keep too many secrets <laughs> okay that's that's you know fair enough last but not least what's one of the biggest piece of business advice you have received um the biggest piece of advice that i have received is to be dedicated to to what you are trying to solve um and uh, uh, be humble when you are able to solve that that problem do not get carried away that, uh, do not become arrogant um, just stay down to the earth sure sure rajan thank you so much for joining me and sharing your story unpacking the last few years of building this business and some of the ups and downs along the way If people want to check out with me what what's the best way to do that uh we have uh, our website www.fitme.ltd you can go there and uh, you can find out uh, a bit more about uh, what we are trying to do uh our okay. uh, that that's our website our email address is info@fitme.ltd so if you have any queries any questions feel free to 
uh, send me an email and uh, we will get back to you as fast as we can. Okay. If an investor or a, or an interested person want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. Again, uh, send me an email info at fitme.ltd or, um, and uh, I'll then provide my personal details and uh, we can carry on further discussions uh, through there. Great. Rajan, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your inspiring journey and the impactful work you're doing right now through FitMe. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on our podcast. Thank you very much, Ash, for this opportunity. And uh, let's hope that uh, we can solve this problem that women are facing day in and day out. Great. Thank you all for tuning in to our episode on our Founders Podcast. I hope you found our conversation with Rajan insightful and inspiring. If you're a founder or industry expert interested in sharing your story on our podcast, please don't hesitate to reach out. Simply email me at ash at artcircles.com. Let's connect for a potential interview opportunity. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast and stay updated on future interviews with proven founders and industry experts. We have a lineup of incredible guests and valuable insights coming your way. Stay inspired, stay motivated, and keep building.